spot. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Um, as you know, we've been away uh, for a pretty intense week, and uh, we're home now. And our children, who are li living with us, and there's a couple of things I wanted to share. Um, we can never substitute <clears throat> the best for the perfect. <clears throat> and, you know, this is a very high calling, as all of you know. And many of us that are called, and I believe everyone on this Zoom is called to the high calling, sometimes the enemy tricks us into accepting the best instead of the perfect. And there's always a loss in that <coughs> because I believe that God wants to give us his perfection in every area of our lives. And I was at the sink I, in my kitchen and I was worshiping the Lord and the Lord is beginning to be very real with me at that moment. And a song came to me so strong out of my past. It was a glorious song. And um, God was just ministering to me through this song. And I knew I have, I have pulled away from the majority of Facebook, but I'm still on because I believe it's a tool for me to minister to the unsaved that I know and to my unsaved family. And I, when the Lord began to minister this song to me, I knew I was supposed to post it. And I sat down at the table and pulled up my phone to bring up YouTube to find it and to post it. And I'll tell you what happened. All of a sudden, a little YouTube video of a little girl that... And the caption, I don't even remember other than this beautiful voice singing hallelujah. And so I thought, okay, let me listen to this first. And it was a beautiful song. The little girl loved the Lord. I think she had Down syndrome and she sang this beautiful rendition of hallelujah. But by the time it was done, the song that God had put on my heart to post that I believed would have been a ministry to someone that needed that song it was gone. It was out of my mind hmm. and I could not retrieve it. And the Lord spoke to me, don't settle for the, the don't settle for good when you have the best. In other words, God was saying, I gave you a song and it was your time to bring it to someone who was part of your friends that needed that song. And it's gone now because you settled for good. That ministered to your soul. It was a distraction. That's what the Lord was speaking. It was a distraction. Mm -hmm. Watch the distractions and count every word that God gives you as precious because our steps are ordered of the Lord. And if we say to him, Lord, use us, let us have your mind. Let us, let us hear you clearly and let us obey you because in hearing and obeying, you will do what I've called you to do for that day. And don't count anything as insignificant because everything that God ministers to you is for a purpose. It's not only to bless you, but it's to bless others. And um, God wanted me to learn that lesson today. And it was significant for me. And the second thing, uh, and probably the first thing that God began to minister to me is in everything there is a sacrifice. When you are a child and you obey your parents, you're sacrificing your own will as unto the Lord if you're a Christian child. Mm -hmm. And 
as you mature, your obedience is a sacrifice with everything in life. But as you continue to walk with God, the sacrifice is greater. The requirement is greater. And um, you pay the price for obedience. And the Lord is quickening. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price now to obtain all that he has to give us? And the price for so many of us, and I believe those that are really seeking for his perfect will, are going to pay a price. And are we willing? Are we willing? And it is not easy to say, yea, Lord, I am willing. I will pay the price because I count you more greater than any natural fulfillment. And we're not talking, brethren, we have gone not, we're not talking about sin versus a life free of sin. We're not talking about that. We're talking about natural blessings, good things, good things to apprehend him and everything that he has for us. And we, the, the Lord has been speaking to me for many weeks now about paying the price. And between yesterday and today, actually this whole week, God has shown us that we have to be willing to pay the price. And the price is significant. It's significant. And um, I just know that as we walk with God, there comes a time when he said, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to let go of family, friends, positions, personal goals, personal desires, that which would bless you to perhaps him and all that he has for us. And the scripture, and I'll leave you with this scripture. The scripture says, I have not seen nor ear heard Hallelujah. what God hath prepared Amen. for them that love him. And Paul said, I count it but loss to apprehend him. And we all have things and people in our lives that are precious to us. But are we willing to say, Lord, you are more precious. You are more precious. Jesus. And I, I'm realizing as each day goes by, we can't be frivolous in this walk, brethren. We can't be frivolous. And everything we sow we will reap. And last week, the Lord said, I said, Lord, what about your people? Why all of this trouble? And the Lord said to me immediately, I cannot bless sin. And he said it not with harshness. He said it as a loving father. Oh, Jesus. I cannot bless sin. When I asked about his people, the trouble the loss, the, the hurt, everything, illness, whatever. I cannot bless him. And so, brethren, have a blessed meeting. I am with you in the spirit. I know that I'm supposed to spend a few minutes before they leave with my grandchildren because I don't know how long before they will. I will see them again. And uh, I don't know if David shared with you, but they are moving. They're moving far away from us. We will not have access to them as we have had in the past. So God bless you, brethren. Thank you, Sandra. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, she brought up a few prayer points. We'll pray in a little later. Gary, did you have something? You were unmuted there. What's that? You were unmuted. I didn't know if you had something. Yeah. 
I'm just really touched. We've heard the word of the Lord, and we've, hmm. we've just begun. Amen. Praise God. Yep. Yeah, I just, the, a couple of scriptures, you know, when she was speaking, you know, Romans eight fourteen. for as many as are led of the spirit, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a high calling, you know, it's, it's, there's a price to pay and we must count the cost and choose, you know, if we are willing to pay the price and as much as we've been in it, as much as we've perceived the price, you know, I'm before the Lord and wanting to count the cost again and recognize it's, it's kind of an all or nothing deal. I mean, this is not a part deal. This is a full deal, man. But, uh, you know, we're wanting to be sons and that's a situation where, you know, the, you know, she said the best and perfection. Then she said good versus the best, you know, <laughs> so, you know, the, the good is the enemy of the best. And mm -hmm. the high calling is we, we are ones, we are a remnant that, that has had a revelation of perfection, who had a, has had a revelation that God can and wants to do something great in a people and bring about perfection. But to do that, the cost is high. And I, I just, I'm just touched again by what she shared and what she said and, and wanting to count the cost again. It's a, it's an all or nothing deal. And, you know, there, there's so much happening in the world today, this year, just 2020, how much we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, there's likely more to come and it's going to be very challenging and uh, I don't want to be naive. I don't want to underestimate or presume incorrectly. <laughs> so may God help us. And I, I want the Lord. And uh, Man. we don't know all that it could cost us, but it co could cost us a lot. So, yeah, praise God. Yeah. yeah. The other scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 10, it says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is done away, that, that which is in part will be done away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these things that are in part within us, this, you know, it's speaking of, you know, prophecy and this type of thing, but uh, whatever those things that are in part or imperfect, when that which is perfect is come, which is him, and he's coming within a people, then those things which are imperfect are going to be done away. Praise God. And there's a cost. You know, how much are we of that imperfection are we really wanting to hold on to? You know, I, mean, <laughs> I want to. Anyway, I'm just touched by what she shared and what she said and, and her cry in her heart and you know i'm sure i don't know the the details of it it's it's different for me than it is for you guys for you and da you and sandra and for each one of us on the call but there, there's a different price to pay there's a different uh challenge and things that we have to let go of that we would win christ may we be willing to count the cost May we count the cost and be willing to pay the price. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. That's amen. It. Praise God. Yeah. I think we should take a moment to pray. Gary, could you lead us? I think you're carrying some of the burden. Sandra's gone, but other of us can pray after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. So, Lord, we come before your throne once again. We come uh, more humbly than ever, Lord. And uh, we just, God, we want to have the full understanding of this word that you're speaking and uh, what it would mean for each of us individually, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord, for the word that Sandra has shared, the, the burden that is upon her heart. 
and the challenge that's before her and before David, Lord, and we don't know the details of it, but, but Lord, she's counting the cost. And Lord, she does not. And we don't want to settle for that which is good or something that is short of your perfect will and perfection, Lord. But as glorious as that sounds, we, we realize that it is, is a great cost and it may cost us everything. Yeah. So Lord, may again, we not be naive or be uh, fooled or tricked in any way, Lord, but may we truly have our souls open before your throne, before you, Lord, and may you shine the light upon us, Lord, upon our hearts. Oh God, we pray. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Father, deliver us from every distraction. Lord, we are easily distracted. We, we confess it. We admit it. Lord, something is moving and we take maybe a lesser road, a lower road, um, a good road rather than the best road. Father, it's a temptation. And as Gary shared, Lord, it is always, the good is always the evil to the best. We're praying, Father, that we would not miss this. Deliver us from the easy distractions. Lord, we don't want to be caught up with a distraction when we should be doing something else, being led by your spirit. Father, we're praying, God, amen, that you would deliver us from every distraction. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah, the scripture in Romans 8, 14 there, uh, that really, I, I didn't explain that very well, but that was regarding this, what she said about the distraction. Mm -hmm. And God is, if we are truly wanting to become sons, even as our firstborn brother was, he was 100% 24 seven led of the spirit. He was tied in with the, the, the Lord, with his father. And that is the high calling. That is the purpose. And if we are truly led of the spirit and that's not 99.9%, .9%, that's a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. We're nowhere near that, but that is our desire. I pray that is our cry. Mm -hmm. That is our hope. But that is the qualification to be the sons of God. Amen. That we would be 100% led of the Spirit. And if we are, we will not be distracted. And there are so many distractions mm -hmm. around us. And, you know, the Internet is just getting on is, is, is one major thing. Mm -hmm. uh, everything we go see has advertisement and this thing and that thing. And there's just so much plethora of information yes. that can pull us away. Mm -hmm. But may we rise up in in the spirit into a place that from the moment we wake till the moment we fall asleep, that we are led of the spirit, that we have the mind of the spirit, the mind of the Lord, mm -hmm. and we are not distracted. We are not swayed. We are not pulled. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Help us, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, brought back in thought to the very first conference I ever went to is 1983, Bloomington, Illinois. Brother Ducille was there. Maybe one or two of you were also there. But I remember, I'm saying yes, maybe you remember the vision that came forth. In one of the first meetings I ever attended a, a Sunlight Ministry conference. And the vision was that the Lord was standing on one end and we as a people were on the other end. But between us was all this furniture, furniture between us and the Lord. 
and an interpretation came forth in the body that said, and the Lord wants us to know it's good furniture, good furniture, but standing between us and the Lord. Mm. And I'll never forget that. Amen. <coughs> Very first conference, praise God. Amen. Well, I just want to give a little bit of a, a background. Uh, we were at the funeral in Atlanta last Saturday, a week ago, uh, for Chuma's you know, service, his memorial service. Uh, they had to limit it to 70 people. There were many, many more that wanted to come. They were turned back. And we saw brotherly love take over and many that were um, in the area uh, bowed out so that someone else could have a seat at the funeral home. And uh, it just was really a lot of, a lot of uh, sacrifice as Sandra was sharing the sacrifice on brethren's part not to be there. They said they would watch it online, which many did. Uh, they tried to keep it to two hours. It went two and a half. Uh, but the, the actual funeral was in a funeral home. They had two other funerals going on in the home at the same time. Very large funeral home. A lot of restrictions. I mean, a lot of restrictions. It, I've never been restricted like that before. Confined, uh, not to be sharing with brethren as they walked through the door. Everybody was seated far apart from one another. Everyone had on masks. Everyone. And so the restrictions were great. And I was shocked on the way to the funeral home. I talked to Brother Chima and I said, well, when we speak, we can take our mask off, correct? And he said, well, you can hear me, can't you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'm talking through my mask right now. So we're asking everybody to keep their masks on. Some people were double masked. Some people had a mask and, and a full face shield on. Brother, and we have entered a whole new world order. I mean, I mean, it just dawned on me, hit me so powerful, so strong in that place. Something of the Lord has been cut off and we're seeing the magnitude of it. And the revelation I got is that when you have a fast face mask on, uh, part of who we are in the Lord shines forth through our countenance. And our countenance is being cut off, it's being half cut off. And, uh, you know, I, I did share a word at the funeral, but uh, it was the most difficult thing I'd ever done was uh, you had this mask that was constantly sliding. You had to adjust it. It was causing air uh, to come up in your glasses. I had to take my glasses off. It was so distracting. And to look over at the musicians all with masks on and they had to sing through the mask. Brother, and it was a very, very difficult. I mean, I've ministered before in situations where there's, you know, children in the back causing disturbances, someone else talking. You minister right through all that, but this was even harder still than anything I've really ever done before. And yet it was a requirement. And some are saying even after a vaccine, uh, we're still going to be required to wear face masks probably the rest of our lifetime. You know, so this is something we're going to have to look at in the Lord. Let's continue to pray about this. I personally don't know if I would step in to a situation again with that requirement. I thought for sure I could take the mask off and they, they really stifled. And you could feel the stifling in the spirit. God help us. God help us, brother. Amen. They have stopped us from going into hospitals. They stopped us from laying on our hands. They're stopping the California churches from singing. It's, they're stopping them from congregating, though riots are in the streets. It, it's so hypocritical. I don't even know how else to express it. But it was a very, very difficult funeral to attend. Even after the funeral ended, they asked, please do not socialize. Uh, they had to-go uh, lunches that they were handing out to all the brethren and they could carry them to their car and go to a park or go wherever they wanted to, but they were free. The funeral home was free from the liability now of any contaminant happening in their location. Uh, the whole thing has totally taken us, I think the church in some ways by surprise. We were expecting an attack. But Brother Daniel, you had a vision that the enemy was coming another way, amen. And if he was coming one way, he would have come by now. But now we found him inside the camp. Okay, so 
we're really recognizing something. It was a very, very difficult. And on top of it was our brother Chuma, you know, very close with an elder in the Lawrenceville Fellowship, one of the anchors, one of the rocks there uh, that was taken home. And so that was very difficult. If you get a chance to watch the video, I encourage you to see it, to watch it, to see at the end, his two sons gave most incredible tribute to their father. No father could expect or desire anything more than what they gave at his funeral. And then the youngest daughter stood up and she was trying to read her, her statement, her, her declaration of who her father was and she just couldn't hardly finish. Broke down crying. The two sons came up around her. Then Maria came up, you know, Chuma's wife came up. This has been a direct hit, brethren, to us as a people. And as we shared, there were some direct hits in the early church, uh, three and a half years of Christ's ministry. But in the midst of that, John the Baptist, his head was taken off. Jesus Christ himself went the way of the cross. He died. The early church, amen, we had Stephen, the first martyr. James is what I shared on, second martyr of the church. Um, the church was familiar with death. They were surrounded by death. And so, and yet out of it comes a sobriety, a life that God wants to bring us up into a higher place that, brethren, nobody has promised us tomorrow and no one's even promised us midnight tonight. So we've got to live for the day. We've got to live for now. Amen. But uh, so I just wanted to recap. That was our Saturday uh, funeral. Like I said, there were 70 people there, but many, many more would have come, would have been there. And then on Sunday, we did a live broadcast out of Dennis and Jeanette's home, which we broadcast live to you. That was the first time we ever did that, where we'd actually have this link come into a meeting at Dennis and Jeanette's. And uh, I'll tell you, if you could have been there, it was a meeting to have been there. God broke out so beautifully in so many ways. There was such brokenness, true, genuine brokenness. And I can guarantee you, there were some real breakthroughs that took place last Sunday. Amen. So we appreciate you being on board. We know you were in the background praying, watching. Uh, we really thank you very, very much. Um, as you went around the room, the hardships that people have gone through, the sacrifices just to be there, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, sacrifice, I think, just to even be in that meeting for many. And God really met, met with us. But I wanted to ask you, before I go any further, how was the meeting? How could we perfect it? Um, what could we have done better? Or should we not do that at all in the future? Should we just have a separate online meeting? someone else host it. What's your thoughts? Anybody have a thought at all? I had stepped away, Dave, but what you were referring to, um, the meeting, the wraps. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt it was okay. Is that the okay. question? Yeah, I'm asking, like, should we do that in the future broadcast if we're out traveling, bring the meeting in to us online? Or should we, you know, have a separate just online meeting like we do right now? How, how was that bringing this online group into a meeting, mainly to observe, to watch, to be a part, Brother Daniel shared, and there were many were blessed, Brother Daniel, what you shared and uh, some, of course, had never met you before. So they were blessed that Norway uh, came into their meeting. But yeah, that's my question, Gary. Yeah, uh, how, is, how can we do things better, uh, audio, visual, technically, or spiritually? Was, is this good? Is this a capturing of what took place there? Or? I, I thought the, you know, the word was good. Again, if we do it, we need to probably work on the audio and the video okay. uh, a little bit better uh, i think we can help with that but i felt good generally about this the meeting as a whole and and i thought we were able to hear the word and and uh i, I felt good about it but and i think i think it'll be a 
a case by case basis, David, right. for example, Wednesday night, you were not available. So, right. you know, we had to bring it in house, so to speak. Sure. Uh, so I, I think it'll be a case by case, but I, I think it can work when, you know, you're out traveling, but okay. I'm fully open to what everybody feels, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Glenn. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was great. And you know, the thing is that we are, especially in this time now, we, we are to be connected I mean, to know what the, uh, the brethren are dealing with and to be there as God is giving, because we all have something and sometimes it's exactly what is needed. Now you may have something there, but you're there, but maybe you don't at that time that somebody else does that's yeah. in the yeah. meeting. So yeah. they can come, they can move right in. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and I believe that's what the Lord wants. I think the Lord yeah. wants us to be uh, well broken for one another, the burdens, you know, we can hear it and we, you know, we, you know, we have to be matured now to, to really yeah. uh, to come to the place where, you know, we really are, uh, you know, our brother's keeper. And we really do need to be watchful. And we do need not only at that time, yeah. but in the future. Because when we see a brother or a sister is going through something and they get a word about them, you know, going forward, then we should be a part of that. We should be encouraging. We say, oh, this brother's going, you know, yeah. got a word, you know, that, you know, such and such a thing. So we should be, you know, right on that and thinking about that. So I think it's really, I think it's great. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's so many other different aspects, but that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise Thanks, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daniel, you're unmuted. Yeah. Are you? You have something hey. to show? Yeah, I, th I think uh, to trust the Lord uh, in these things and, and really, uh, uh, when, when you feel feel that you are led led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, where the Spirit of God is, it's a free freedom. And. Uh, uh, there is uh, just if everything is is uh, ready for sharing meetings like, like this, mm -hmm. it's a blessing. Because when when we see this, when we see the Lord move, like uh, we saw in this meeting, uh, it it was a blessing, it was encouragement, and it was really uh, you could feel feel the heaven was rejoicing when uh, someone is saved. So, be led by the Spirit. Uh, it's it's what we are talking about uh, yeah. or through through these things. Praise and I, I I think I think when we see in the Revelation when he speaks about that, he that overcome it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, we we sometimes think about it in a so different way, but mm -hmm. if we look at it like. There is nothing that is going to come between me and Lord. Praise God. I'm going mm -hmm. to overcome everything mm -hmm. that is hindering me to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. That is to overcome. Mm -hmm. And we know this time that we are living in now that the spirit of this world, like you were talking about, how everything is changed. Yeah. And what what uh, you share about uh, the John the Baptist, mm -hmm. the spirit of the world want to take our head off. Yeah, he want Amen. to take he want to separate uh, mm -hmm. our body our, our 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 body of Christ. He want to separate it from Christ. Mm -hmm. He is coming against us in this time. Amen. We are coming into the area where the enemy is raising up his army to come against the body of Christ. Amen. And we, 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 we have to stand up in every, every hour, every day, every night, to really press us in, into the presence of the Lord Amen. and stay there. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sister Vinny, did you have anything to add? And I I was working that night, so I wasn't uh, with Daniel all the time. But I was coming home uh, the last uh, minutes, 
and just just coming and uh, seeing uh, uh, being able to see into the meeting was a blessing to me and then uh, uh, watching the video and uh, listening to the praising i thought it was uh, a great blessing mm. so so i think uh, it was it, it was almost like we also was there even mm. even for me who 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 watched it uh, the next day oh amen <laughs> you watched the recording Okay. I I was recording, but I but I came home uh, in the end when when you were praying for people, yeah. and uh, I thought that was uh, marvelous to just uh, come and just uh, feel mm. the spirit, even though we wasn't there. Mm. So I think it was very good. Praise God. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, very good. Well, let me share a couple of miracles that took place that day. Okay, I think it's open for us to share. Uh, first of all, you'll notice there was Patrick and Christine. Uh, we used to fellowship with them down here in Florida for several years. They lived in West Palm Beach. We live in Port St. Lucie and we would trade houses, either our home or go down there. And as they gathered more children, it became a little more encumbered. So we had to go there, but they moved to Georgia in 2016 uh, and then Patrick had to stay behind with work and moved up there in 2017 up to North Georgia where Dennis and Jeanette are. So they've been up there three, the children and Christine four years up that in that area. So that's a blessing. These are young people that are raising their children in the Lord. Uh, Russ has to be the happiest man other than his wife, probably the happiest woman on this earth to see their children coming into the Lord and growing in the Lord. It's just beautiful, beautiful. They're an integral part of that fellowship there up there now. And they're just a, a wonderful, just a wonderful family raising eight children. And uh, we went there for dinner one night and we noticed uh, they didn't have to give the children any direction, any command. They took the dishes from the table. They helped in the preparation of the meal. They washed the dishes. And then they were gone to their respective rooms and to take care of things. Uh, they are really, really have a lot to share about families. Amen. And they're some of our younger people coming up that for every 10 that maybe aren't overcoming, here's one that is, praise God. And we thank the Lord for what we see in their lives. But you'll also see in that video, there was Russ's youngest daughter, Stephanie. She's married to a police officer. Uh, he was in West Palm Beach. That's where she met him. And they took a transfer and he moved up to North Georgia here about, uh, oh, about six, seven years ago, maybe. And uh, he decided to quit where he was at and take a new position from the ground up in Georgia. And now he's been promoted to a sergeant. So uh, it was very interesting to talk to him, especially what's happening in this country today about the police, the police officers, and what's going on in Georgia concerning the rest of the nation. And just briefly, brethren, he said, nothing's changed for them. Nothing. He said, we are not going through any defunding, any cutbacks. We are here in the state of Georgia. We're doing our job. And he described a lot of the things that are happening. So it was good to get his insight but only recently, within the last, I would say, two months, has Stephanie and their two daughters, two children, I think they're three and four, uh, started to come to the meetings. So again, uh, praise God, we can rejoice with Russ and Susan as we all rejoice when any of our children come in and want to come to our meetings. I mean, it's one thing for they, them to go to church, but it's another thing when they want to be joined with us. It, it's such a highlight. And so we are so thankful for what God is doing in, in the Blum household. It's just marvelous. Amen. Praise God. So you saw Stephanie, who is not a regular. She just came. And so she's starting to receive and really blessed by the meetings that they're having. It's just marvelous. So I could go on and on for hours about them. We stayed with them for the seven days we were up there. But, uh, 
also, you'll notice there was a woman, Susan, and she had her daughter, Leah, there. Well, she has another daughter by the name of Rachel. She's a regular at that meeting. She was not feeling well that way, but Leah called and said she would come. And she came with her mother. And Leah, um, I think Stephanie said she hasn't seen Leah in 20 years. Some of the other brother hadn't seen Leah in 10 years. And when we ended the meeting, we were praying for someone. The reason we said for some, you can come back on was that we saw something of an absolute miracle. We saw Susan, the mother, playing on the piano. Leah was singing. And the two of them have not played, they have not sung together in I don't know how many years. It was an absolute miracle. As you could hear, she has the voice of an angel. Uh, just breathtaking. And when you hear Leah and Rachel sing together, and we've seen Rachel play the violin, they're just in beautiful harmony together. It's just a blessing. And uh, just the background, uh, the enemy has tried to take that entire family out. I mean, out. Totally, not just injured, not just maimed. He wanted to absolutely destroy that whole family, every one of them. But praise be to God. We are believing God. For him, he's doing something marvelous. You can see life coming into these daughters. Susan, you can see life coming into her. And we are still praying. John, the husband, is still around, and we're praying for him. Brethren, we need to pray for John. If you remember John the Heal, he, he needs a lot of prayer, and we're just praying for him. But we see God doing something so marvelous. And so that was a miracle in the, in the meeting that day to see the mother and the daughter sing together, Susan play the piano, and Leah sing. So if you go back, you can listen to the very end of the meeting where they were together. Uh, you also saw a newcomer come to the meeting. We had never met this brother before. Dennis met him, just felt to invite him to the meeting. And this is good for us to see how evangelization works. You know, it's one thing to bring someone to know the Lord into the outer court, you know, salvation experience. But it's another thing to bring a person deeper into the deeper things of the Lord. And there's a real evangelistic gifting to bring someone in the outer court into the holy place. Brethren, all of us should be gifted that way. All of us should be looking to the Lord for the skill mm. to reach that Baptist neighbor, that Pentecostal person down the way. We should have the goods, brethren, to bring them the next notch up and if we don't, of course, we know where to go. We go to him. We have to pray. Look to the Lord to bring them in. So Dennis invited this man. And at the close of the meeting, he said, no one has ever read my heart like that. My heart was just totally wide open. It was, it was like my whole storybook of my life was just read out. Okay. Well, praise God. That's a testimony of the Lord. And so we were able to minister to him. Amen. And Dennis and Jeanette, you continue to pray for them because they're the ones on the ground reaching out to him during the week and on other occasions, just reaching out to him. Uh, so a lot happened in that meeting. And brethren, you know, it wasn't videotaped all the way through because we broke for a meal, but we were there till well past midnight. It was a tremendous time of fellowship, uh, of just sharing. There was more prayer. It was just so much what we call the family of God. So, amen. We're just so thankful you could join us and be with us in that portion. Praise God. Amen. And any other comments at all on that live meeting that could be a benefit to us in the future? Anything at all? Pat Sweeney, you were on mic for quite some time. Uh, it, I, I feel the same way Randy does. Technically, it, it needed help, but it was amazing being there. I mean, that's the way I learned. Personally, I learned more from, uh, you know, watching interaction with the spirit um, in a group, almost like a fly on a wall type thing. You know, I, I just learned so much from that, watching the Lord work in people and things like that. So, you know, it, it was excellent for me. Um, and I, I mean, I visit different fellowships, even though I go to this 
more mm-hmm. often than not. You know, it's uh, yeah. That's I just like that diversification. You know, somehow it's diversified and it's there's a meaning to it for me. I don't know somewhere. Technically, it needed help, but uh, mm-hmm. it'd be a great idea if if you and Sandra do a lot of traveling. It'd be, you know, I. I'd go to the meeting if, if you were going to show that, you know, if you were going to join a meeting and show it too, I'd, I'd do it every time. Sure. Well, we can diversify. Any one of us go out to a meeting, Gary, uh, Tom Sigworth, well, I mean, any of us, any of us travel, Bob. Yeah. That would be really very good. And we could do the same thing as we learn how to use this technology. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Well, Terry's traveling right now, so he's going to speak, right? put them on the spot right yeah. but praise god for you have there, right terry we see all these angels stacked up behind you so yeah. praise god but we you know we have the internet for the moment we better take advantage of it it may not always be here and we have zoom for the moment we we may not always have that but uh, as we travel you know it's as easy as most of us have these little convenient notebook computers and we just flip it open and log on to the internet and hit Zoom, and we're pretty well connected. But uh, it can be a blessing. Yeah, praise yeah. God. Yeah. This this group would never be without Zoom. Hmm. You know, I mean, look at us. We're, you know, you and I are two and a half hours apart. Hmm. Um, everybody hmm. else, nobody else lives in this state, you know. It, would, it just wouldn't happen every week, twice a week, you know. If it wasn't for Zoom, it's amazing. Yeah. Praise yeah, God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us know each other, but we only see each other maybe once yeah. a year. And yeah. that's about it. Yeah. Praise God. Good. Well, Terry, we'll put you on the spot. So you got to say something. Yeah. I know you have going a back, Going back to uh, Sandra. Yeah. Yes. Just a little closer. And- yeah. Uh, striving for perfection. I'm going to move here a little. Lighting's funny. Um, this morning, um, it is interesting being here because I'm 100% isolated. I'm away from my wife, my children. I Even those that I'm working with, um, we're a team here, but we don't see each other at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a a job here and I'm doing it. And so this morning is is like going back to my early days, you know, when you first meet Jesus and it's, you're very undistracted. And it's like, yeah, there's a price to pay to be away from everything. And uh, it's like, it's just you and me, Lord. All the distractions are gone. Other than work, I'm here to work. That's what I've been called to do. Mm-hmm. And, and there's kind of a clarity in that place. And so what was interesting also is like, okay, I'm also in a place, Lord, where you can deal with me in a different way than when I'm home and the influences of home. And what I find as far as the influences of home is the many distractions you're pulled in many different directions with family, with uh, responsibilities around home. Yes. You know, you're, it's a good place to be, but it's different. So when I'm here this morning, I really dug into Romans 12, 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And the last part of that is the, the acceptable, the per- good and the perfect will of God. Yeah. But uh, and also a big part of it, too was the transformation of our minds. And when I'm here um, doing this job, it, it confronts me. It, it's a very linear thinking job and computer and what's required of me. And I'm more of a right brain artist type. So mm-hmm. it, it knocks me down pretty hard. It's, it faces me with like a weak area and as you look at yourself, you go, wow, there's patterns of thinking that I'm used to all my life 
mm. that aren't necessarily bad, but you're highlighting them now, Lord. You're, you're bringing them into focus, Lord, to deal with them, and that we would have the mind of the Spirit and the mind of Christ Amen. and recognizing just natural thinking, not necessarily evil thinking, but natural thinking. Mm-hmm. And at home, I'm not necessarily confronted with that. So the Lord has isolated me, and it's kind of a precious time because, Lord, it's just you and me. It's just you and me. It's beautiful. And the times with the Lord here early in the mornings are sweet. Um, I'm vulnerable. It's really a unique call to perfection. And it's really beautiful. And it's also recognizing that some of the ways we think that we're used to, that we grow up with, isn't the highest call. God wants to bring us up to a higher call of thinking in him. And I'm not sure how to get there, but, you know, I love that passage in Romans. And I love the Greek, you know, being transformed. That's metamorpho, Mm -hmm. metamorphosis, like a caterpillar being changed into a butterfly. And I wish... I wish I could just wave a magic wand and it would happen. I would think just like Christ. I would think only in the spirit, but I'm pressing, I'm striving. And it's really beautiful to be here and just to know that, wow, the Lord has called me to do this unique job and traveling to, I don't know where it's not something planned, you know, it just happens, you know, based on, you know, the weather events. And so it's kind of a neat time. Uh, I'm kind of too busy to be lonely. Obviously, I care for my wife. But uh, it's like, wow, this is kind of neat just to be like the early days when it was when you were single and you just knew the Lord and you weren't distracted and you weren't carrying all these burdens of responsibilities at home. And and so it's kind of neat to be here and to be in different places and meet and realize that in different parts of our country, people are different. People are different. And here in the Midwest, they're not looking for a handout. You meet with these farmers and they already cut the branches off their houses and they got them in the burn pile and they're not waiting for the government to come in. They're, they're very uh, proactive here, you know, very friendly, very warm. Many of them are Christians. It's really neat. So it, it is neat, you know, uh, experience, but just the time with the Lord here and just being isolated, even though I'm very busy, the early mornings, you know, I have time with the Lord, but it, it's kind of precious of recognizing the perfection he is calling us to. And it's, it's by being transformed and changed into his image. And, and I think for a lot of us, the battle is in the mind. The battle's in the mind. Well, he's only battling, the enemy's battling those weaknesses. He's battling the, the natural thinking sometimes. He can't battle the mind of Christ, you know, and so it is becoming uh, unified with his word. This, you know, Romans 12 is, is about the word, you know, being transformed. And so it's that living word that transforms our mind. So it's precious to sit here like Deuteronomy 8, 8, 3, and that we would live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Amen. So that's what I'm going through, brother. (laughs) Praise God. Yeah. Well, we're with you, brother. Amen. Like Pat shared, this is a family and we couldn't do it any other way, but we're with you. So even when you're all alone, you're not alone. You know, the Lord is with you, but also the body's with you too. Amen. Yeah. Very good. Amen. Uh, Brother Joe Ansa, I don't know if you can connect, if you have a good connection but we'd love to hear what's happening in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, that area of the world. Brother Joe, praise God. Welcome, brother. Ah, we can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted. All right. Praise God. Okay. Praise God. It's good to be back. Amen. I've been having network issues. Anytime I connect, especially when it rains. Yes. Over here, the network is really bad. 
So that's why I have not been connecting. Besides, yeah. I also felt probably the enemy was trying to attack my coming on this um, platform. You know? Do you so think? I think yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Because everything seems to be going bad due to the network. But uh, I'm sure that the Lord will uh, intervene. It's gone. And I'm getting solutions now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, I heard you all talking about Zoom and that um, without Zoom, mm -hmm. we yeah. will not be having these um, meetings. Fellowship. Yeah. Uh, earlier today, in one of the fellowships in, Lag in Lagos, a brother revealed or told us that the Lord revealed to him the meaning of Zoom. Okay. And he said, Zoom, that is Z00M. Zoom means Zion, Zion's original overture to men. Zion original overture. You know? <laughs> Amen. Uh, Yes, the devil thought um, he will hinder us, but I think the Lord has I saw this from time and said um, the body of Christ will meet. You know, the, the Mount Zion as it is, it's a spiritual location. Zion is spiritual. Amen. That's great. And it is yeah. an innumerable company of people. Yes. Just like he said, innumerable company of angels. So it's a location in the spirit where Christians converge with Christ as the head. Mm -hmm. And we are not bound by distance Amen. and location. Yeah. So and that is what the Lord is trying to show us through Zoom. Amen. Physically right now we are yeah. meeting but very soon as we grow in the Lord okay. this physical boundaries will be broken down. Amen. We'll be able to communicate and talk to ourselves no matter the distance. Because our Lord is omnipresent. Amen. Omnipresent and omnipotent. Yeah. So with time I believe that the Lord is just showing us mm -hmm. what will what will come to be in, in future. Praise God. Yeah, That's praise great. God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. Yeah, so he shared with us what Zoom stands for. Amen. That's great. Yes. Amen. Zion's original overture to men. Zion original overture to men. Praise God. That's great. That's great. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember a sister that went in for diagnosis to the doctor, and the doctor looked at her and said, I have some really bad news. You have ALS. Okay, if you know what those stand for, it's a very, very tragic and debilitating disease that takes you down. Mentally, you're all right there, but you end up suffocating to death. It's just a horrible, horrible disease. And she looked at the doctor, and she heard the pronouncement, and she said, a loving savior. ALS. And the doctor looked at her like she just doesn't get it. And he looked, she looked at the doctor like he's not getting it. <laughs> Amen. And you know, that sister, she went home to be with the Lord, but ALS did not take her. The Lord took her. I believe because of that pronouncement right there when she said a loving savior. So I like that for Zoom. That's good. Amen. It's connecting us as a body, as a family. Thank the Lord, brethren. This is really good. Part of our family here, you know, Alex and Maxine are normally on, always on Sunday. Well, they had to travel emergency. They had to get a flight. They took a flight to Philadelphia. Uh, Maxine's mother, it didn't look like she was going to make it. They said, you better get here. You probably won't see her. And so, the good news is God has resurrected her. She's had the stent, the operation put in, and they've sent her home. So 
Amen. The, Alex and Maxine are just rejoicing in Philadelphia right now. So we can rejoice with them. Amen. For this victory, God's given them a little more time with Maxine's mother. So praise God. And, you know, you talk about the goodness of God. David, their son, used to be in fellowship with us here in Florida. Pat, you know, amen. Just a good brother, excellent in music, talent, just gifted from the Lord. But the Lord was leading him to go to Philadelphia to move there one year ago, this summer, just one year ago, to be with his grandmother. And uh, his parents didn't want to let him go. Now, maybe we don't have those struggles. <laughs> we don't want our children to go a certain way. But it was the Lord. And so we released him. And they came to a point of releasing him with the blessing of God. And it has been an absolute blessing and a necessity for David Walker to be with his grandmother through this whole COVID thing. His grandmother would have never made it. Amen. And now, as the surgery, surgery came up and the rest of the family had to go up there and join, you can see the hand of God so perfectly designed. I'm just going to drop that nugget today. Brethren, our lives are absolutely orchestrated of the Lord. We're talking about the perfect will of God. This is not some theoretical, imaginary thought. We can find ourselves directly in the center of God's will. So Alex and Maxine are right where? God wants them to be right now in Philadelphia. God sent their son, David, one, week, one year ahead of time to be there when he needed to be there. Our steps are ordered to the Lord. I'm looking at Glenn, Glenn and Linda. Did you have a place to stay in California when you first set out, Glenn? Amen. <laughs> and no, I know. no, we didn't, though. No, we didn't. Uh, the Lord had plans. <laughs> Amen. We didn't, we didn't see it, though, but... Uh, you know, we're praying, Lord, how are we going to do this? The Lord had already set things up. It's amazing. He set up a condo for us uh, to be in for our daughter for the operation because we said, I mean, the hotel bills, uh, if you want to, you know, find one that's right, you know, <laughs> you know we just didn't know what we were going to do, you know. Amen. But it's just, uh, I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, the place we're in now, this is a, a two floor condo. I mean, in California, you know, you're talking about <laughs> well, anybody knows. I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, the Lord really set us up. So God is so good, you know, he yes. just works things out. <laughs> Praise, God. Praise God. Would you say you're right in the center of God's will, Glenn? Oh, yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's marvelous. You know, California real estate's very high. Oh, so yes. hotel rooms are astronomical. <laughs> You could compare them to the big cities, New York City. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, all the way around the world. High price, Paris, London, expensive, $300 a night rooms. And God provided you, Glenn, your wife, and your yes. daughter. Our daughter, our daughter has a, you know, a place where she can, you know, be restored, you know, and you know, downstairs and we have the, you know, bedrooms upstairs, you know. So, we, you know, we... Uh, like I said, you know, and it's helped out a lot, though. You know, even the place where we're at, you know, everything is positioned, you know, for us to uh, be able to operate, no. you know, and to move, you know, and get things done and take care of things. He put us right in the place we need to be at. I mean, it's amazing. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> We're rejoicing with that testimony. That's great. Yes, yes, Amen. praise God. Oh, yeah. Praise God, yeah. You know, Russ and Susan Blum, they're in Florida right now. And he's going to be with his brother, who's going to maybe go through a liver transplant, which was unheard of, but he might qualify. And like Russ said, if I'd have been anywhere else right now doing missions, traveling in Mohammed, he said, God, he had me right here, right now for my brother's need. He said, this has to be, he said to me the other day, this has to be orchestrated of God. I could have never planned this. I just found myself in the right place at the right time to be with my brother, that he would know that God loves him and there is a body around him, brethren around him, family around him that love him too. So we're rejoicing. So remember to pray for Russ and Susan also, amen, that have joined us. Praise God. Amen. Uh, brother Campbell had about this week. We got a call 
and uh, he had to be you know, going to the hospital by emergency. Uh, they brought him in and uh, actually it was my wife when she heard that he was having trouble, she said dehydration just comes to me, just like that, the word dehydration. You know. So we got the word to Judy, they got some fluids in him. By the time the ambulance came, they hooked up an IV line, which is like instant you know, fluid to your body brought him into the, you know, into the hospital and you know what they do, run him through every test imaginable. Okay. And it comes back. It looks like just dehydration. Amen. So, so that's a good word for all of us, brethren. As we get older, sometimes we say, I don't like water. I don't like to drink. Don't ever say that. <laughs> drink brethren, drink. Water keeps your body hydrated. Amen. I'm just Give you a word from my wife as a nurse for many years. Amen. Keep yourself hydrated, especially in these latter years of our life. It keeps our mental faculties sharp, keeps us thinking, keeps us alert, and it also causes the whole body to function well. Drink good, clean water, but drink water. And then remember that. So many people, when they get older, they say, I don't like water, I don't like to drink. That's not a good sign because you end up not drinking and you get in trouble. So thank the Lord, he's been released back home as of yesterday, back out of the hospital, he's home. And uh, we've got a word. Uh, Gary, you have anything more to share? I'm Brother Campbell. No, he got back home yesterday and he's doing, Judy texted me again today that he's doing really well. And uh, we're just thanking the Lord, praising the Lord, yeah. Man, we just you know it's kind of up and down, and you know we just need to generally keep him in prayer. I'm sure many of you do. Yeah. Uh, but you know he's got the knee problem, then the back problem, then this, and he doesn't like to talk about it. You know, like any of us. <laughs> but uh, we just need to keep him in prayer, and you know the enemy wants to discourage him and uh, get him to not be able to minister or. Mm -hmm. uh, feel too good. So we just keep him in prayer. And, uh, when he's feeling well, you know, the ministry is there and, and he's all mm -hmm. excited, you know, about traveling even and getting the word out. He, he feels the pull and the need out there. And, uh, yeah. you know, he, he'll be 91 actually the end of September. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's, when he's uh, feeling well, I mean, his strength and his mental faculties are there and the word of the Lord is on his lips and it's, uh, he wants to go, go, go. So just pray his body will get younger and catch up with his spirit. That's 33 or something like that. So <laughs> praise God. Yeah. He's doing well today. Amen. Praise God. I think he's going to be 91 this month. Yeah. Praise God. The end of September, next month, yeah. Next month, okay. Yeah, praise God. Good, good. Any other reports on Brethren? It seems to be a time of just sh open sharing today. I had a word, but I don't think it's it's uh, for, the, for the now. I think just let's hear from the body today and let's pray. Any other news on anyone else? Larry and Madeline Hyde, they had a son, Randy, uh, that was in a hospital. They didn't know if he had COVID. Uh, he was there two weeks and he's finally been released. And so Madeline has been taking care of her son. She said, I don't think he's ready to go home. So he had to move in with Larry and Madeline. They took care of him. I just got a text this morning from them. Uh, nine days, they've been taking care of Randy. And she said, I think he's well enough to go home, but we'll make the trek up the mountain and bring him back home. But I don't think I'll have to spend a night so we thank the Lord for moving on behalf of Randy. Some of you know him, remember him. Good young man in the Lord. Well, he's not so young anymore, but praise God. He, he's hungry for God, and uh, there's good things in store for him. We just know. So that's the news on that front. Uh, Sonia and uh, Jenna, who's been on the same Zoom call from time to time, uh, she's got her health issues. So continue to pray for Sonia. I mean, the attacks of the enemy are just, just tremendous. We can see the enemy really hitting hard, as Sandra shared on the beginning of this call. The attacks are great, and the sacrifices are much. Praise God. 
Brother Tom, surely you have something to share with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a good time of sharing. Um, just going on the Zoom call, I, you know, I agree it's a great opportunity. I know Zoom is a public forum. And I don't know, you know, looking at it, there's other ones out there now. I know with the or, or homeschool group, they got to a more private one they're doing it, you know, mm -hmm. using. That might be a consideration in the future because of the um, the public forum of, of Zoom. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the format is wonderful. And uh, I think it's that, well, you know, how we, we got to get to know Daniel and yeah. Vinny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To the level we have. Pat, to see you after all these years. And I'm saying, Joe, just to get, get to meet you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Brother Joe, all the way from Port Arcot to Wisconsin. I mean, praise the Lord. Uh, even, and like you said, we see a lot of you, brother. We've seen him over 30, 40 years, two or three times a year. Now we see him one, two times a week. You know, I know, um, you know, I'm looking look at it, Bob. We, uh, getting to, we're drawing closer together. We had Amen. a great time at his house here on our trip back to Colorado and on the way back, um, just all these things. Glenn, getting to know you from, you know, he's just one of the New York brethren. That's, you know, <laughs> we can see in there. So I, I just rejoice in all that. Um, the only thing, David, on that time, sometimes we need to be sensitive to personal prayer. Yes. I mean, we need to be aware, Amen. you know, at that time, especially if people are, don't know us or they're right. new. Yeah. So we do want to be a little sensitive. That's my only mm -hmm. concern with that, that we have to be attentive. Um, yeah. On a, what did you say, Gary? Uh, I agree with you. you said we case by case is something we want to look at. But I think yes. the form, I don't think it was wrong or anything like that. I, you know, it, but it is something that we just need to really hear the Lord in the midst of that. Uh, the other thing that was interesting is you're sharing about all the testimonies and the stories. And I got reminiscing and, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself where the Lord brought me in the last year out of both my businesses you know, less than a month, before, the second one, less than a month before this COVID thing said, and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, that that happened. Um, and the other one, I, I got thinking about the, when this all happened, people were given Psalm 91. And so when we talked to Brother Cam was turning 91, <laughs> to me, it was a little confirmation. Uh, I, I think it'd be good to reread it because it is, it really talks about people, how God takes care of us in need. If we seek him, Amen. you know, um, we, we, we have that place, whatever our need is. Mine was in my business aspect. Glenn was needing a place. Uh, David Walter, you know, he sends men ahead. Not Walter Walker, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Each and every mm -hmm. one of us, what, yeah. what God has done. Um, it amazes, but I, I was just, re Psalm 91 as we were speaking. Um, in it, it just, it just fits in everything we're talking about. The hour in which we are at, and being in that place. Um, I put a little note up here from years ago. Um, something we used to tell, we well, still tell our children, but we used to always say, obedience is a safe place. And um, no matter what we're doing, we're, obedience is a safe place. And I have that written above this psalm. Obedience is a safe place, you know. And that that is the key, all these things. You know, David Walker was obedient to go to Philadelphia, even though yeah. there were those that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had different thoughts about the business, but I felt that was what God was speaking. You know, we have no idea what, what may be before us or went after us, you know, uh, Gary and, and just seeking God about your operation yeah. and you know what, you know, I mean, you had all those options, yeah. but hearing God and obeying what you felt the Lord was saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, brother Campbell, I'm thinking each and every one of us have those testimonies. And uh, so that, that, that's about, you know, that's all I really have to say. Uh, I'd encourage y'all to reread Psalm 91 um, you know, it was one of the very first psalms people came out with with this, but I think it's a, a time of revisiting that to know we are in the right spot, the best spot. So, amen. amen. And hello, Linda. We see you. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Linda. Praise God. Thank amen. you. God bless. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. How are you feeling, Linda? Well, I'm a little tired, a little war torn, but God is still on the throne and we're just believing Him getting up every day, doing what we have to do by the grace of God. Amen. Well, we'll pray for you right here as we close. I just want to read a prophecy and you're going to be shocked at the end of this prophecy. Who delivered this prophecy? When this prophecy was delivered and where? 
So praise God. So let me read this prophecy. Listen, tune in, because Terry St. Louis touched on it, the mind. The battle is in the mind. For out of the bosom of the earth have I called the people that they might proclaim the sovereignty of their God. Yea, with their lives they shall proclaim. Yea, they shall come forth as a burning and a shining light. And naught shall quench their burning and naught shall dim their light. For they shall be an anointed people. Yea, they are a called out people. And they shall proclaim the name of their God without fear, without faltering. For yea, the Lord thy God doth anoint a people who shall not turn back, but who shall press the battle to the death. Rise ye up, therefore, my people, be not conformed with the ways of the world, but be ye transformed with the renewing of thy mind. For yea, thou shalt not ascend unless the mind be renewed. But if thou art careful and troubled by the affairs of this life, thy mind shall be pulled down upon the earth in the darkness, and thou shalt not behold the work of thy father in this day. For yea, the enemy does confuse the people, and the enemy doth confuse them, and yea, they are confused on every hand. But look thou unto the Lord thy God, who is thy preserver, who has called thee unto a place in himself that no other shall take, but they to whom it has been given. God. See that thou doth not fear. See that thou doth not fear, mm -hmm. saith the Lord thy God. But hearken unto the Lord thy God, unto that which the Lord thy God speaketh, unto that people for this hour, for that purpose for which he has called them. For yea, thou shalt be a peculiar people, yea, thou art not called unto the place where thou shalt do the things that thy own heart and thy own mind doth dictate unto thee. But yea, thou art called unto the place where only the mind of Christ can lead thee into that perfection, into that place in that battle, where thou shalt have the victory, where thou shalt proclaim his name, where thou shalt proclaim his royalty in the earth. Yea, the Lord thy God doth wait upon that people. And if thou shalt arise, and if thou shalt lay hold of the promises of the Lord thy God, thou shalt attain. But the Lord thy God doth have no pleasure in them that draw back. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Draw thou not back. Draw thou not back. Be not afraid, saith the Lord thy God, for greater is he that is with thee than those that are against thee. For yea, the Lord doth have no pleasure in those that fear and those that falter. Yea, the Lord thy God doth have no pleasure in them, and they have no place in that rank of believers that shall press on and claim that which the Lord thy God hath declared for them. Therefore, arise, arise, shod thy feet, put on the whole armor, for yea, thou art in turbulous time and weather. Thou shalt be shaken, yes, but only those things that can fall apart will fall apart. But those things that cannot be shaken shall remain, saith the Lord thy God. See to it that thy feet are firm upon this rock, that thou shalt neither in thy shaking be removed or be taken out of the way for the Lord thy God moveth forth for his army is strong in the earth and shall accomplish that for which he has called them that for which he has molded them that for which he has waited in tender planting and nurturing that it might bring forth his glory in the earth amen amen, amen. that was a prophecy my sister Mavis Ducille, wow. August 1982, Schuyler, Nebraska. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Praise God. What a word. Amen. Well, that's, brother, let's just pray. Let's close this meeting by prayer and uh, seeking the Lord. I want to pray for Sister Linda. Well, many we mentioned. So let's just pray by the Spirit today. Praise God. 
Praise God. Father, we pray today. We pray for our sister Linda in California. Lord, a lot of travel. We know the warfare on the road, Lord God. Just to even one mile down the road, the warfare is increasing. It's changing. It's an ever-changing world out there. We're facing a whole new world order out there. And we're praying, God, you preserve Glenn and Linda in California. Not only, Lord God, that they would exist, but Lord, that they would overcome in the midst of the trials, in the midst of their struggles. Lord, they're ministering to their daughter. They're touching Glenn's father. They're ministering to others around them. But Father, expand their horizons. Let them grow in you. Let them touch those that, Lord God, you're leading them to, we pray. For where you lead them, there is fruit, and that fruit will remain. So we pray, bless Sister Linda physically. The maladies, we pray, God, let them dissipate in the name of Jesus. Every familiar spirit, every iniquity that is beleaguering our sister in the name of Jesus Christ, we command it to be broken. We pray for her freedom by the blood of Jesus Christ. And let her be whole, every whit whole, her mind. We pray right now for her ears, stability in her ears, we pray. Lord God, we pray for their ears, not only the hearing of the word, but also the natural ears would be, Lord God, put forth to its natural function and no other malady and infirmity will hit her or harm her. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Praise God. Father, we pray for their daughter, Naomi. Lord, we thank you for her. Lord, we know she's one of us. She's been joined with us as part of the body, part of the brethren. We're praying for Naomi. Lord, we often don't get to see her, but Lord, we know, Lord God, there's a call of God upon her life. And she's serving you to the best of her capacity right now. But we're praying, bring her the next step up, the next level up, Lord God. Father, we're talking about being joined with us, the corporate people, the body. Amen. We're praying for Naomi, that Lord, she'd come into all that you have for her. Bless her today. We pray for a speedy recovery from her surgery. We pray, Lord God, that she could mount up with wings of an eagle, Lord God, where she would run and not be weary. She would walk and not faint. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless her. Bless her in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for brother, sister Campbell, Lord God. They've been in stress this week. Crisis, Lord God. We know what it is at that moment of crisis, Lord, where you just don't know how things are going to turn out. Having to call for the ambulance, calling for that emergency help, We've been there. Amen. And we're praying, God, uh, what a drain it is on us mentally, physically. Uh, the drain, even the enemy attacking with anxiety, fear of the unknown. We pray for Judy today. Send restoration to her soul, to her body. God, help her to recover as she helps to minister and minister life to Brother Tom, we pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful couple that has served the body totally unselfish at their own cost so many times. We pray a blessing upon them. Father, we know our brother Gary is trying to help them find a car. Father, there's a perfect car for them. Lord, many have come up, many on the horizon, but they've all just dissipated away. They've all slipped through the fingers, and we know that's been your hand, Lord God, guiding to the perfect vehicle for them. We pray, God, apprehend that perfect vehicle for them in the name of Jesus, that even at this stage of their life, they would be blessed to know they don't have to worry about their vehicle. It's going to run. It's going to start. It's not going to have mechanical problems. It's going to run and carry them where they need to go. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless them. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We pray for Russ and Susan, South Carol, uh, South Florida. We're praying, God, that Russ would be utilized in your hands as an instrument to minister life to his brothers that are down there. 
the loss of his mother, Lord God. We're just praying that it would do the cementing work that you want to do. So many things dividing that family from their youth up. We bind that spirit of division. We come against division. Division is not of God in that which you are unifying and bringing together as the body. We come against that division, amen, that divorce, that competition, that whatever that spirit is, we come against it by the blood and we pray there be a unification and you would bless Russ's siblings as you're blessing him in his household with his children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You brought up uh, uh, Sonia and Jenna. Yes. And we, we talked to them, um, was it David? Yesterday. 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 And so we weren't just you know, Amen. because we know we didn't need prayer or they, they need to be strengthened. They, they're having some troubles with their, their, their vehicles and you know, there's some things that need to be uh, going Amen. to the body. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord God, we just, we thank you, Lord God, for the life that you give each one of us, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Lord God, and Lord God, the abilities, Lord God, to get through, Lord God, these times, these hours, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we bring our sisters, uh, Sonia and Jenna, before you, almighty God. Amen. Lord God, we pray for your divine intervention in their lives, Lord God. Every need, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord, especially their health right now, Lord God. Uh, mm. They need, Lord God, revitalization, Lord. They yeah. need restoration. They need uh, uh, strength. Hallelujah, Lord. You are their strength. You are Jehovah, everlasting strength. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord God, that they will be able to receive that life flowing in them, Lord. And we speak the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that yeah. heals and delivers be their portion, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we pray, oh Lord God, concerning uh, um, the the um, the things that have been that, that 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 has been plaguing them even now and over the years lord god lord god this has taken a toll their bodies lord we, we just pray lord god that this thing lord god will be taken care of lord this thing concerning this uh sonia's mm -hmm. nervous system lord god yeah. and and this just many things lord god that they're dealing with their bodies lord god and lord we are praying now lord god for your healing, Lord God. And your word is established. The mm. word is established, Lord, that mm. you deliver us, Lord God, from every uh, 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 infer infirmity, yeah. every sickness. Lord, let this be their portion, oh God, that they receive, Lord God. And Lord God, we uh, we ask, Lord God, that their heads be uh, encouraged, that they, they look unto you, Lord, we come to help. They would not be dismayed. They would not be discouraged. Hallelujah, but they'll be like David who encouraged himself in the Lord and move forward, Lord, because they know that you are the one that orders their steps. You are the one that brings them through, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the living God. Glory to God. Lord, we also pray for Ruth's her daughter, Lord God. Yes. Lord God, Lord, we just Lord, we just continue to pray. For their victory, for her victory in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. even over her mind. Hallelujah, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you give us the mind of Christ. The mm -hmm. mind of Christ is available to us, Lord God. Let, us, let, let her harness and take a hold of your mind. Hallelujah, Lord God. And she's able to walk through this thing, this attack against mm -hmm. her mind. Hallelujah. Lord God, we just... We just come against the vices of the enemy Amen. that's working against her mind right now. And we curse it right now by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that you renew our minds, as, as it was Amen. said earlier. Lord God, you do with the renewing of our mind. Lord God, let this be our sister's portion. And Lord God, we pray, oh God, that the uh, um, sister Ruth is, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, receiving all that she needs, Lord God. Yes. And that uh, um, yes, she's encouraged, Lord God. We pray uh, concerning her, uh, uh, her back and, uh, and these areas, Lord God, where, the, where the, there was pain, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that she's comforted. She's comforted in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Lord, there's so many, Lord, that we 
as it comes to mind um, that that need it. But Lord God, Lord, you know, Lord God, the body that is suffering right now. Lord, we pray for them on the on the call, on the prayer call. But Lord, I just bring them all to you right now, Lord. Those that are, are suffering with different ailments. Lord God, we, we are standing and believing, Lord. We are believing for their, their healing, Lord. We are praying for, we are believing for their deliverance. Hallelujah, that it will surely come. Hallelujah, they will surely come for your word is surely established. Hallelujah, Lord. So we just speak that life to our brethren right now. Whether they're dealing with uh, things of the body, things of the mind, uh, um, the stress of, of, of the day that we live in, in this hour, Lord, we pray that you would raise each one up, Lord God. Raise each one up, Lord God. And they will be renewed like the eagle, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Well, good, brethren. Excellent. Uh, just two last thoughts here. Uh, one is a great report out of Ethiopia. We just got a report from our brother. Um, we know Brother Tillahun that joined us in the Florida conference in January. Uh, the other brother is Fikri. These are the two golden nuggets that we have over there in Ethiopia. Fikri is the natural brother of Sister Ruth that Glenn, you just prayed for, amen, up there in Washington, D.C. And uh, he had about a thousand copies of the pattern written in the original Ethiopian language called Amharic, and uh, they've distributed about 950 of them. He has about 50 left. And there suddenly is hitting a hunger for this word in Ethiopia. Amen. Praise God. You know, a book sometimes can go somewhere where you and I can't go. There's always been letters written, epistles written. Amen. You think about, you know, the book of Luke that was written, amen, to one person, Theophilus. He's got one person. And you read all 24 chapters and you think, what a labor to write to one person. That must be a fluke. Well, he ended up writing a second letter. It's called the book of Acts. Amen. <laughs> we don't realize that was written to one person. And so we see what a book can do, an epistle can do. And so, um, you know, you can burn a book. It's much less costly than a missionary. Amen. So a book can go elsewhere. It's reaching all the way to the borders of Sudan. It's reaching to the outposts. And he said, some of the testimonies are phenomenal. We'll try to get some of those testimonies out to you. But this is a great report, brethren, that people are receiving that word. They say, we need to hear this word. This is the word for the church in this hour. And it's going forth. And it's in the land of Ethiopia. So remember to pray for Fikri. Brother Tillahun is still there. He's marooned there. He can't get back to the States like so many of our brethren are. Brother Alade, he can't get back. So, so many locked in. And Brother Tillahun's wife has moved now recently. His wife and three children now living in Columbus, Ohio. So whenever you're traveling through Columbus, Ohio, I know our brother from Norway probably goes through there all the time. Amen. Praise God. Just seeing if you're with me, brother. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So Columbus, Ohio. Amen. Just remember that. There's a wife and three children. They've not seen their father or husband since January. That's a long time. And we don't know when he can get back. Earliest might be even October. Now they're talking. It keeps getting pushed back. So continue to pray for our brother there. Uh, pray with us. You're going to hardly believe what I'm going to say, but we're praying about having a conference 
not a virtual conference, but a face-to-face -face conference down here in Florida, like we did last year, just before all this COVID thing hit. But some of the brethren have shown interest in coming down and we're talking about having maybe an open air meeting. So, you know, Tom will be glad to know we we're considering Plattsville, Wisconsin, but it's really pretty cold there in January. We'd be outside freezing, but we could do it. Amen. Praise yeah. God. But we're thinking on the beach somewhere, somewhere we can get something open air. It's comfortable down here in January in Florida. So we could, uh, we could have a conference. So we're praying about that. We actually are praying right now. So pray with us. We want to make a decision next month or two for sure of location. Brother Tom, what do you think of that? Plattsville? Yeah, we live in southern Wisconsin, so it's not so bad. <laughs> and uh, we're not far from a town that does set in Amaya for Daniel. So we could, we could really make this a hometown festival. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm more open to going south. <laughs> as long as the, uh, you can get get there by vehicle, but uh, yeah. Anyway, just just want to let you know it's we live in balmy southern Wisconsin. So. <laughs> it's eighty nine degrees today, so it's <laughs> beautiful. Nice, what's, yeah. What's the average temperature in January? What do you say? Yeah, <laughs> we're eight point nine. I don't know. If I, no, it's right around freezing thirty. Yeah, something like that. But sure, sure. Amen. Praise God. It's good. So, yes. That's what we're considering, not keeping everybody indoors, but we could be outdoors in January. <laughs> There's only but, a few places. United David, States. the scriptures say there's treasures in the snow. So, uh, okay. You're beckoning so, us up north. I can feel it. Yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> amen. But I, we will we will defer to, uh, to Florida for a conference in January. You used to have a winter conference up there right around that time. Well, remember the Rockford one? Yeah, it was in February. Yeah, that uh, where brother uh, who was that brother? The first time he saw snow from Jamaica. Um, oh, <laughs> drawing a blank on his name. But oh, you know one other thing, Dave. I wanted to mention. Yes. For thirty some years, we went to every Fourth of July conference in Illinois. Okay. I missed one year, and that was nineteen eighty three, because my daughter was born on the Fourth of July, nineteen eighty three. My daughter Stephanie. So we were in the hospital that day. So we, you know, I just assumed I was there, but the more I thought about it, that was the one we missed because of uh, the birth of our daughter. So, a little <laughs> side note doesn't mean anything. But Amen. <laughs> we did. Yeah. So we missed that first time of seeing you. Praise God. God bless well, you me. just heard the prophecy that was spoken just about that time, 1982, yeah. August. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Sister Mavis. Mm. That was marvelous. Praise God. Amen. Anyone else? Anything else? Praise God. Great. August 82. That yeah. was just a few months after Rockford. August, Rockford was February 82. That's right. So. Yep. Yeah. And, and the last time, Bloomington right. conference was uh, the summer of 1983. Yeah. Was like, and then we started having them in Champaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. History tour. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. That was. Amen. God bless you, brethren. Amen. It's been great. Really good. Good time of prayer sharing today. Amen. Bless you. Brother Bob, will you close us in prayer today? Amen. Thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for yeah. assembling us. We pray you would uh, bless and keep each one of us day to day and that we would uh, indeed uh, walk in the center of your will. Uh, Amen. Day to day, moment to moment. Uh, we thank you that this is possible through Christ our Lord, and uh, all things are possible through you, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings to us. And watch between us while we're apart from one another until we assemble again in a few days, Lord willing. Yes. And uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God. Oh, Amen. Uh, Blessings, uh, brother. Everyone. Bless well, you, best brother. You all. Send our love to all the brethren in Port Harcourt. Amen. <laughs> Bless you. Amen. Great. Good night. Good night. Good night.